My name is Alfred Webb. I'm 20 years old, and I'm a public health major here at Jackson State University. My name is Lance Perilu. I'm 18 years old. I'm a freshman, and my major is Miro. My name is Rashad Riley. I'm 23 years old, and I'm a mathematics education major. Okay, hello. My name is Monte Lee. I am 22 years old. I am a junior here at Jackson State studying in computer science with a minor in graphic design. I'm from Orange, Wisconsin. I am Christiana De Silva. I'm 22 years old and I am a junior biology major with an emphasis in physical therapy. I'm a visual learner because it helps me recall information for tests, quizzes, and other school activities. Well, I'm more of a visual learner. The more I interact, the more that I'm able to picture and see what's really going on. I'm not really textile like most really most students. I, the more I can see, the more I can definitely learn. For the most part, it's a combination of visual, kinesthetic, and linguistics. I like to relate things by looking at words and how they correlate as well as visual, graphic organization of things and sometimes spatial manipulations help me understand concepts. It's like when you just interact with everybody in you know, like a friendly environment where you know the teacher explains everything and you know I like instead of just like the teacher just saying read this read that you know actually everybody interact with each other and have you know you know, get different thoughts on things. You know, I learn different. You know, I learn from actually if a teacher can hold my uh, attention. I'm not really the the book savvy type of person. Like to read the book, I actually prefer. Uh, I actually line up hearing very well. If the teacher can hold my attention and you know do a good lecture. That I learn faster. Like that can actually crack an open uh, book. For learning when in class, I prefer my teacher to engage in conversation and uh, discussion class as opposed to I'm going to put up a PowerPoint, you guys are going to read off the PowerPoint and then you're going to take the exam. Problems I've had with my education so far uh, include teachers that are solely rely on lecturing to teach students information and also uh, when teachers are just rigid when it comes to um, coming up with solutions to help students that may not have passed a test or quiz, qu or quiz and they um, they really don't help accommodate the students with solutions to solving that problem. One problem I'm usually have with teachers is, well, teachers that really just, they just teach directly out the book. They don't really have their own style of teaching. They just pretty much just read what you're already looking at. And that honestly doesn't help students at all. Past problems I've noticed when it comes to education are professors that rely too heavily on lecture without bringing in any other mediums that address student learning styles. Biggest problem is actually um, not understanding a teacher or a teacher not understanding me because sometimes when you ask a question, the teacher can't quite understand what you're trying to ask and sometimes they go without you actually answering your question. They just leave you in the dark sometimes. And that's one of my biggest things. Then another biggest things is just communication and my biggest problem is staying organized and stuff like that and you know with the notes and stuff so maybe if everything was just in one that really helped me too a lot but I could say my biggest flaw is probably communication and, and probably reading straight out the book I'm not I just can't read and grab although so. PowerPoints are helpful it would be more helpful if the teacher were to explain it and uh, go more in depth about it instead of posting it up and saying read this take your exam um, I feel that I learned the most through writing things down and discussing it. I'm not the type of student that can just sit down, read the book, retain the information, and take the exam. Well, it keeps me active because I can picture present day things with all of the past events, and it really I can't. Ah. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Role in a student's education involves going beyond the basic textbook presentations, class lectures, and questions, and then assessing them on this knowledge on a test. You have to work to make it so the student gains a comprehensive knowledge base that they're using your class 
as well as classes that they'll take afterwards. And this has this can be achieved, but in order to do so, we must go beyond the simple means of paper you know, assessments. Bro, I think it'd be good if you know maybe one of my favorite things is actually going out and like maybe learning random things like watching like the History Channel or. Googling random things and stuff like that. I really don't like the book. I'm more of a technology. I love like just looking up and Googling random stuff about that's how I usually prefer to do research more so than sitting in front of a book. You know, that's just one source. I love to just go out and like search the internet and, you know, watch uh, documentaries and stuff like that on trying to find what's being taught. First, I think professors should be um, motivated and excited to teach students because when um, students pick on pick up on the fact that teachers are not um, engaged in what they're teaching if it makes the students become indifferent or not really want to learn that specific topic. Um, well, in my history class, our, our teacher, he modernized most of the past events to make us understand from a present point of view what's really going on. To further engage students in the learning experience any class material on any subject must be modernized and brought to the forefront. Students have to actually see the information and its theories and concepts being applicable to so real life. Really what engage is actually making everybody participate, you know, making sure no child is left behind. So, you know, some, well, not child, but students, so some students feel left behind because they don't get it. Well, I think the teacher should try to develop a better relationship and you know, everybody come together and share their thoughts on what's being presented or the current topic in the classroom. And I think that help a lot of students, especially like in um, subjects like chemistry and calculus and stuff like that. A lot of kids get left behind because, you know, everything's moving so fast. And I think if everybody take the time to share what's, you know, where everybody currently at, a lot, a lot of us want to get left behind. One of the most important tools in education that I can think of is the textbook, and I think it helps when teachers uh, take out the information that's uh, relevant to the scope of the course and present it in a way that makes it interesting to well, the students. Really, pretty much right now is just the internet and the books, really. And how can we improve that? Well, more technology, to be honest. I think really technology nowadays is really enhancing the way we look at our subjects and our classes, and. Honestly, just more technology. What can be done to improve these educational tools is a more streamlining of information and packing them with more content-rich information that is pertinent to the classes without being too superfluous and extraneous. Another technology in advance. So maybe if you had like you know the book where you read you know a chapter on this, then maybe have a documentary right behind it and make you understand what's being taught even better or something that's, you know, more to current events and stuff. So, that's how I believe that could help with come, come to books. Okay. Uh, if you could make your perfect, just dream textbook, the one that would make sure that all your classes pass, what, what would it be like? Um, to make sure everything passes, just, I mean, simple, but get to the point. Because a lot of that stuff, I think, a lot of stuff in books be very irrelevant sometimes, and they kind of stir off a little bit. If it just simple, to where you can get it and understand it and apply it, I think that's learning. Cause you know sometimes they have you read all these chapters in the book and and all this unnecessary stuff, and sometimes it, it stares away from the main point that you trying to the teacher trying to get to, and that's how it be confusion between the students and the teachers. Cause the teacher wants you to learn this, but the book is saying something else. So sometimes that you know it kind of bumps heads like that. So I believe if you can bring both together, that be Perfect, like, you know, simple but powerful information. And, you know. Um, well, I've had teachers that um, required us to read material before coming to class, and I've also had teachers that preferred to discuss everything in class as we went through the textbook. Uh, both styles have actually been helpful, so through reading the textbook, well, I won't necessarily say reading the textbook in class, but the teacher highlighting key points from the textbook and delving into an immediate discussion at the start of class, that has been helpful and um, for me to retain information. As far as reading the book beforehand, 
uh, that's also helpful because you can, if you have a question, you can ask the professor, well, expound on da 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 da, or I didn't understand this. So I do agree with reading textbook before coming to class and also the teacher highlighting the key points in the textbook as you go through the chapter. Uh, I do actually like textbooks because the way that I learn when I read, I have to highlight as I go. Uh, I've had an ebook before and I did not like it because although it allows you to highlight during the um, computer, it's not the same as you taking your highlighter out and visibly highlighting it. Um, I'm personally staring at a computer all day is not something that I prefer to do. Um, however, the advantages of technology, um, it allows you to flip from screen to screen if you need to look something up for reference. That's helpful. It's just if you're a person that gets distracted easily, then here's your computer. It's an educational tool. However, here's Facebook, here's Twitter, Google, anything that you can do to distract you from learning. That's the drawback from uh, having a computer or an iPad in front of you while you study. Um, things I dislike also, I don't like Scantrons. Scantrons, they are a pain. Aside from the fact that you have to pay for them yourself, and no longer free since you're in college. Um, I dislike the use of Scantrons, so just, I would prefer to be able to mark on the actual exam paper made up as I go, as opposed to going back and forth, because sometimes it messes me up with I might mark the wrong bubble, and I get that answer wrong because it doesn't correspond to the correct answer. Okay. Now, just on another thing, this is not even anything for the video, but um, what if we could say integrate the ebook like a regular book and integrate all your exams and homework into it? We could basically say like, you know how you like to use the highlighter, right? Yeah. You know, we can create styluses which work the exact same way. And whenever it reaches, and you say, like, hold a button down, it'll highlight the same way you normally would. Okay. You take your hand off the button, you tap right next to it, it'll pull up a screen, and you can actually start writing your own notes there. So you'd have all of your notes and all your highlights in a book, which takes up no space. Work. Another thing we were talking about is, like you were talking about the Scantrons. Yeah. Well, if you get at the end of the chapter, you know how you have those chapter questions? Yeah. Well, what if we actually start rewriting those, and we integrated a study guide questions? And then we could actually integrate your tests later on, too. So that you'd actually be able to take and do the homework there, directly As in the book. In, like, the, at the end of the chapter, use those questions for quizzes? We'd rewrite them. And instead of it being those questions, it'd be your actual quiz. But we'd be creating the textbooks ourselves. Well, of course I'd enjoy that, because I don't like it when teachers, they just make up any and everything, and it doesn't correspond to what the lecture was about. Mm -hmm. The, obviously, at the end of the chapter, those questions, they go back, they go hand in hand with uh, the text that you read because it's at the end of the chapter. But some professors, they just pull any and everything, and it's hard to take an exam and to prepare for an exam that way because you don't know exactly what's going to be on the exam. The professor can put whatever they want, and it can still be classified as this is the material that we've covered. But I do, that is a nice idea to at the end of the chapter have already the questions that um, are going to be asked on the quiz. Like it would actually be the quiz. Well, You'd yeah. be able to take it, it would instantaneously grade it, and any of them that you got wrong, it would tell you exactly where to go to. Now we could say as a quiz, we could say as a homework assignment, we could just say it as a study guide. But it would tell you instantaneously, once you take it, where that was at. You'd be able to flip through the book as you went and move the book simultaneously and still take those questions. So what about, because for my chemistry class, our homework is online. It um, allows you to go through and pick your answer, but it'll tell you that it's wrong. So you can, of course, go back and click the right answer. So how would that? Well, it's possible to do that. But the way I was thinking was talking was once you get it wrong or say it's a quiz, then it it's actually wrong. will it'll be wrong, but it'll go back and okay. show you exactly. If you click on it, it'll take you to the exact page and reference to where it was at. Okay, well that would be a difference that would be helpful because as far as um, what is it, my chemistry, the program that we use for uh, the chemistry department, it it doesn't give you reference where to go. It gives you the book online, but when you get the answer wrong, you basically have to figure out on your own 
how to solve the problem, mm -hmm. what you did wrong, why you did not get full credit. It doesn't go in depth about, well, this is what you could have done to get full credit, or this is what you could have done to solve the problem. See, we can actually rewrite that so it actually will tell you the whole thing. And another thing you're talking about chemistry. We were actually talking about putting in kinetic elements. You know what kinetic learning is? All right. Catch this. Imagine that's a molecule, okay? You can see its texture, its different shapes. We're just using it as an example, all right? Now, kinetically, you can touch and feel and get understanding, right? Each of the molecules are all different shapes, different shapes, different feels. So what we would do is we would put on an iPad basically a digital model of that, a 3D model that you can turn, that you can move around, that you can see 360 degrees. So that when you see something like a benzene molecule or something of that nature, you'll know exactly what it looks like, the same way as playing with those plastic blocks. Or say in history, I was talking to Devontae about the pyramids. You see the pyramids in pictures, but you never get a real scale. So it would be like a pyramid, you could touch it, expand it, and then basically zoom in and out, and then they show you like a real person's physical size. Okay. So you may actually see in real life, yeah. Okay. And you may actually act like it was there. Like you held the pyramid in your hand and just turning it around and actually see it. Okay. So that's one thing we're talking about is adding in that kind of learning experience, different puzzles, games, that things right like that. That right there I feel would want students, get students to actually want to learn. The fact that they get to just not read a textbook, but experience, you know, fiddling around with molecules or pyramids mm -hmm. to more just more so just to I can't concentrate. Well, I think about say biology when you're talking about the cells. Imagine actually seeing like you see these pictures of cells, right? They're always two dimensional. Yeah, it's boring just yeah. flat and now you can turn around and actually move around and pick things up. You touch on it and say so you touch at the nucleus of the cell. Then you go inside and you can see the mitochondria. You click on the mitochondria, it gives you a brief description, so tells you about so it. So more so like uh, video feed? Mm -hmm. like, like an interactive video, yeah. Okay. Video, audio, all of it combined. And that's what we're trying to do with these new books. We're creating super books. Super books. Full learning suites. Okay. So that your books. They're boring. They're boring? Yeah. How's that? So how so? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they boring. Because they it's just like dry text don't hold my hold my attention long enough. If you ask me, it's just like some of the stories be good, but also it just it, sometimes it just don't hold my attention. That's my biggest problem. You know, sometimes it's kind of best to relate the tools to current events and stuff like that, and make it more. You know, just, we in a different generation, so make it more interesting. Because you know, I believe you know books kind of. I hold my attention. I'm not just a dry text and reader. I love when you know you relate to other current events to make me understand the situation better. And also, I believe you just I don't know. I'm just I don't like books. They boring to me. I'm you know I'm more of a I don't know. I just I hate books. Well, how do you make books better? By just instead of making more dry text, bring more you know more current into it. Like. Just the books. Um, I mean, some books good, some not. It just sometimes it just be so dry text and just it just kind of hard just reading word for word the word. You know, mm -hmm. maybe just instead instead of books sometimes maybe incorporate documentary videos and stuff like that. And maybe somehow maybe can you combine both? You know, to understand what's going on better if if that's possible. I mean, you know the technology getting advanced. So maybe if you had like. You know, the book where you read, you know, a chapter on this and maybe have a documentary right behind it and make you understand what's being taught even better or something that's, you know, more to current events and stuff. So, as I believe, that could help with come, come to books. Okay. Now, if you could make your perfect, just dream textbook, the one that would make sure that all your classes pass, what, what would it be like? Um, to make sure everything passes, just, I mean, simple, but get to the point. Because a lot of that stuff, I think... A lot of stuff in books be very irrelevant sometimes, and they kind of stir off a little bit. If it's just simple to where you can get it and understand it and apply it, I think that's learning. Because, you know, sometimes they have you read all these chapters in the book and and all this unnecessary stuff. And sometimes it, it stares away from the main point that you're trying to, the teacher trying to get to. And that's how it be confusion between the students and the teachers. Because the teacher wants you to learn this, but the book is saying something else. 
So sometimes that, you know, it kind of bumps heads like that. So I believe if you can bring both together, that'd be perfect. Like, you know, simple but powerful with information. And, you know, maybe just, you know, a book, you know, a book should be fun, you know. Not all books can be fun, but, you know, she incorporate something to where, like, it's simple and it brings a lot of power. And maybe, you know, videos are always help, too. A lot of people are visual learners, most of I mean, we're hearing with their ears and also, you know, instead of just reading, because some people just can't read and comprehend like that, you know, videos and other tools and just, you know, engaging the classroom. And, you know, co communication is the uh, key, you know. Maybe try to incorporate some of social media websites and stuff like that. Because, you know, everything is all about the social life and all that. So I think that help incorporate a lot of things, you know, like have, you know, group chats, study groups, and just... And, you know, everybody, even with the students, like, if you don't get something, maybe have all the students join, like, a text thing, like a text group, and try to incorporate, you know, I don't get this, can somebody help me understand that better? And, and I feel like, you know, a lot of us get left behind, I think, is, you know, like they say, divide we stand, unite we fall, we all need to come together more with, even with books and technology, just to make everything more simpler, because I feel, you know, Unity is a very tool, a strong tool of education when it comes to us as uh, blacks and us as a whole nation. We just need to try to come together and bring these education tools in better. Thank you, Devon. Teachers like during the class, maybe just by a teacher lecturing and they got a question, maybe start like a just interact, use our uh, media, like use something like Twitter, like pound sign this for this class and just put the classroom name and date and just, you know, as a teacher lecturing, just tweet the uh, the questions you have and maybe, you know, maybe have some up in the class because I know that like on Google Chrome they got a thing you can download called Tweet That. So maybe just, you know, just search that uh, hashtag thing and while the teacher lecturing, just the questions that's being raised just pop up down the line like that and maybe the teacher can stop and see that and address it right then and there. Mm. And you know, with certain subjects and stuff like that. So I think that help too. You know, just actually just, you know, incorporating media, you know, these technologies to actual our education because if you, you know, like with the Twitter thing, I think that'd be a great idea, you know, tweet the answers while you got them because sometimes you forget to ask a teacher a question. So maybe if you just tweet it right then and have like a, a group the tweeted in and stuff like that, a teacher might be able to, if not, get to it while she lecturing, get back to it after the class or stuff like that. So I think that'd be another great idea for uh, incorporating into uh, learning. That sounds great. Yeah. So. And once you tweet, uh, uh, I mean, they tweet what shoe available. You click the shoe and it takes you straight to the checkout. And I thought that was nice then. Now you get straight to the point, but what I was trying to get to there was that was uh, you have to use TweetDeck, you know. And with TweetDeck, it just shows everything that's being tweeted as it streams. It's like a live stream of you know, tweets, just nonstop. It's just gonna keep running, running, running. Mm -hmm. So you know that's why I was just saying like education. It have a uh, a question in class, you just tweet the question, and as you tweet the question, it just you know it keeps streaming, or you know even as a study group, you know. People might tweet how you get the answer to this, and somebody might tweet back like, "Well, the answer is this, and I got it like that." And maybe if you if it's a big enough problem, maybe just you know have it where you can you know uh, attach the link to the tweet and show how you got the problem, you know. And that helped too. Just you know questions you raise, you see it on the screen because you know a lot of kids. I mean, lost. What were you saying? Now? The problems you've had. Problems I have with teachers, uh, as far as keeping my attention, is their tone voice. So if I have a teacher that's going to just talk flat all the way across through class, I'm not going to be engaged. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to text on my phone. I might just leave class early because sometimes that has happened in the past. Um, and necessarily making it fun. For some students it's just hard to make education fun regardless if they made the choice to go to college or not. But um, you have to be the teacher that shows the student Education is fun. You can learn information at the same time. Uh, I've had teachers, through their passion for what they do, it has made me want to learn. So the teacher showing that they want to be there, well, 
I can't necessarily say it was fun, but it made me want to learn. And as far as teachers who crack jokes, well, that's obviously a plus to wanting to learn. You want to be in their class because you know that you have a teacher that wants to teach, wants to be there, and wants you to learn the information at the same time. Okay. Very good, very good. And live from New York, it's Saturday night. <laughs> mm. This is an Oprah moment. You're on the this couch. Is definitely o this is definitely an Oprah moment. Um, For the most part, it's a combination of visual, kinesthetic, and linguistics. I like to relate things by looking at words and how they correlate, as well as visual, graphic organization of things. And sometimes spatial manipulations help me understand concepts. Worry about how you look, just do it. Snuffleupagus. What is the question? I can't win, I can't rain.